Welcome to Moments of Grace. I trust it's going to be an exciting and scintillating time in God's Word. God bless you as you listen today. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. If I could speak any language in heaven or on earth, but did not love others, I would only be making meaningless noise. Somebody say noise. Mm -hmm. Like a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I knew all the mysteries of the future, I knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good will I be? And if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, without love, I'll be no good to anybody. If I give everything I have to the poor and even sacrifice my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. Let's read on. Verse 4 begins to describe to us what love is. Love here is talking about the agape love of God. He's not talking about when, oh, oh, you know, when he entered the room, I couldn't breathe. That's not love, that's asthma. Let's look at what love is. God kind of love. Verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. It is not boastful. It is not proud. Love is not rude. Love does not demand his own way or her own way. Love is not irritable. It keeps no record of when it has been wrong. It keeps no record of when it has been wrong. It keeps no record of when it has been wrong. It keeps no record of when it has been wrong. No been wrong. Verse 6. You're smart. I will, I will have stayed in there till next year if you didn't clap. Verse 6. Love is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. Prophecy and speaking in tongues and special knowledge will all come to an end. Now we know only a little, and even the gift of prophecy reveals a little. But when the end comes, these special gifts will all disappear. Verse 11, it's like this. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Verse 13. There are three things that will endure. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of all these is love. This morning I want to talk to you from the subject, making melody and not noise. <clears throat> In the Old Testament, the Bible describes the garment of the priest. It's called an ephod. And the Bible teaches that the, the, the edge of the garment, of the ephod, will have bells and pomegranates. A bell, a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate. So that when the priest that ministers to God on behalf of the people anytime they go into the presence of God, into the tabernacle, into the Holy of Holies to minister to God. The people could not minister to God. The priest had to minister to God on behalf of the people. This was how it was in the Old Testament. The bells were interspersed with the pomegranate. A pomegranate is a fruit. Somebody say fruit. So that 
as the priest went in, it is a mixture of the fruit and the gift of the bell that made music as the gift went in to minister in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the New Testament, the Bible says God has made all of us priests and kings under God. So that God's plan to only have a select people amongst his people, the Levites, they were the only ones allowed to minister. God had done away with that and now has made all of us kings and priests unto our Lord. So that now we are all supposed to be able to communicate with God. We are all able to minister with God. Remember that prayer. The Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor. Give you his peace. In the Old Testament, it was the priest that was supposed to pronounce that blessing on the people. If you don't know that prayer, I'm going to ask Isaac Bakorede to, to come teach you. Isaac will come teach you. Praise the Lord. In our church, we say to one another, because we believe that we are all priests under God. Praise the Lord. One of the things that I'm so concerned about in the body of Christ today is that it seems like many of us have held on to the old way or the old wheel or the old covenant of relating with God. And we have renegated relationship with God to the so-called man of God. The tragic result of that is that we have so much lack of ministerial etiquette, so much pulpit abuse, in our generation because we have substituted God for men. Now, if you know me, you know I have very little tolerance for people who are called to serve God's people and think that God's people are supposed to serve them. I can't stand that. I cannot stand a man who calls himself a man of God and abuses that position and uses it to pray and just to carry on anyhow amongst God's children. The Bible says we are all called to serve. It's important you understand that. That in the body of Christ, there is no such thing as a big I and a small you. That we are all worth the same in God's eyes. Part of the reason why we have made this mistake is because we have equated gift for maturity. And there's nothing further from the truth. The Bible teaches us about three different sets of gifts. In Romans chapter 12, it teaches us about administrative gifts. It says all of us, we should display and use our gift according to the degree of the proportion with which we have been graced. In Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about ministry gifts. These are fivefold ministry gifts given by Jesus to the church to equip or perfect or mature the church. Not to pray on the church, not to be superstars to the church, not to be celebrities to the church, but to serve and equip the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it teaches us about spiritual gifts. 
gifts of the Holy Spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, diverse kind of tongues, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings and miracles. He lets us know that each one of us are gifted. We've been teaching that last, uh, last month, uh, a month of May was the gift, was the month of service. We're teaching, we're letting us know that every single one of us, according to the decision of Christ, our Lord, he's chosen to give us gifts. Praise the Lord. Now you are gifted. You may not know it, but you are. You were born with that gift. Nobody gave it to you. you, you God gave it to you. Praise the Lord. You don't decide your gift, you discover it. And you will never know the gift you have until you give your life to Christ. The day you give your life to Christ, the enlightenment of the gift that God has given you becomes visible. And then with the help of teachers and mentors and, 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 and spiritual fathers, they help you develop your gift. We don't give you your gift. We help you discover and develop your gift. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the thing about a gift is that a gift is very visible. It is noisy. It is showy. When a man is operating in his gift, my God. Praise the Lord. We all want to be around him. You understand what I'm saying? When a man who is gifted musically begins to sing, we all want to hear him. When a man who is gifted uh, in preaching begins to preach, we all want to listen to him. When a man who is gifted with the gifts of healings and begins to walk in the gifts that God has blessed him with, we all want to be around the anointing as we see sick people get healed. It's all gifts. Somebody say gifts. Different gifts, but the same God. But please, do not ever mistake a gift for maturity. Grace International Church invites you to Freedom One Way 2015 Youth and Young Adult Conference. Saturday, July 11th, Sunday, July 12th, and concert featuring The Walls Group. Joel Positive Murray. Plus the Heavenly Steppers One Way Worship, Dance Drama Team, and much more. Admission is free. See you there. Now, a fruit, somebody say fruit, is different. A fruit gift is what God gives you for the benefit of others. Your fruit is what you give back to God as a result of your work with him. When a fruit falls, a fruit will always fall near the tree. You've heard that adage. A fruit never falls far away from the tree. Because while you can manifest the gifts of the Spirit without the presence of God, without a relationship with God, you cannot display the fruit of the Spirit without the presence of God. It is not the gift that determines how mature we are because the gift was given by God. It is the fruit. Somebody say fruit. I need you to get this. Say fruit, fruit, fruit. It is the fruit that tells how mature we are. Because to walk in the fruit, to display the fruit, to manifest the fruit, you have to have a strong, dynamic, cultured 
cultivated working relationship with God. God will never reward you based on the manifestation of the gifts. He gave it to you. Praise the Lord. I just gave my kids iPhone 6. Why in the world will I applaud them? Hey, you have an iPhone 6. I gave it to them. God will reward you based on your manifestation of the fruit. It is the fruit that determines your maturity. The fruit. Your Christian character. The Bible tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering, self-control. Your love life is what determines how mature you are, not your preaching life. Your love life is what determines how mature you are as a Christian, not your singing life. Your love life is what determines how much you impress God, not how many miracles you perform. That's why Jesus said, many will say, I did this in your name, I did that in your name, I did the other in your name, because they are manifesting the gifts. They are manifesting what God gave them, but they have given nothing back to the God who gave them all these gifts. Paul said, if I have all the gifts in the world, if I have all the gifts in the world, I know all mysteries, I know all knowledge, I know all the tongues of men and of angels, and I do all of them, and I do not have love, I am nothing. I know all languages, all languages. I was talking to my nephews and niece this morning. They were born and grew up in Lagos, Nigeria. And they can't speak Yoruba. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm asking them, they can. You can. You can. They can. We understand a little. Praise the Lord. Paul said, if you are so bad and you can speak everything, but if you have not love, in other words, gift without fruit is nothing but noise. A gifted life that is manifesting the gifts of God that God has blessed them with. Whatever gift it is makes no difference. And they have no fruit, no love. They are not patient. They are not kind. They are rude. They are irritable. The Bible says you're nothing but a noisemaker. No wonder, no wonder, the garment of the priest, the Bible says, the ephod, must have, thank God for the gifts, thank God for great preaching, thank God for great music, thank God for healings and miracles, our God still heals you, thank God for the gifts of the Spirit. We need the gifts of the Spirit. But we must always understand that what indicates how mature we are are not the gifts, but the fruit. Are you with me? So he said the ephod's garment must be the bell, which is a type of the gift, and then the pomegranate, 
which is the fruit. So in order for us to make music and not noise, in order for us to make melody and not just be a, what the Bible calls a loud gong, It is not enough for us to discover, develop, and manifest our gift. Every single one of us must constantly and consistently work on producing fruit. Somebody say fruit. This is why Paul said, now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 was after 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talked about the spiritual gifts. You understand what I'm saying? All of the loud, wow, showy things, the wows that woos all of us, gifts. In 1 Corinthians 13, he moves from gift to fruit. And he lets us know that love is what's more important. Love is what's more valuable. Love is what's much more critical. Then he, about the end of that chapter, look at what he said. He said, when I was a child, I spoke, talked, understood as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. So what <clears throat> makes me a man it's not how great a preacher I am. It's not how many miracles I perform. It's not a oh anointing man. Of, no. What makes me a man is how much love that I have. How much love that I have. How patient am I? How kind am I? How long suffering am I? Agape love of God. The ability to love the unlovable, to put up with the intolerable, praise the Lord. That is what counts to God as Christian maturity. The fact that I'm not telling my husband what he did wrong 15 million years ago, I'm not putting this face. Love keeps no record of wrong. It is not irritable. It is not rude. It is not proud. It is not boastful. Love understands that there's nothing I have and there's nothing I have that if, that if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'll be worse off. Love never looks down on anybody. Does not demean people. Does not prey on people. Does not use people to get along. Love. Our focus, our emphasis must be back on love, must be back on the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. How do I grow in the fruit of the Spirit? Because let me tell you something. We have things so, so walked up. In our, in, our, in our society. Worse still, we have carried the stinking mentality into the church. And we have substituted values for things. And we think if I have a bigger house, I'll be happier. If I have a bigger car, I'll be more fulfilled. If I have more money, I'll be more joyful. You are wrong. There are people who have much, much more than you have, and they are miserable. Are you with me? If you're really going to enjoy, if you're really going to enjoy, if you're really going to enjoy this one life, 
that God gave you. If you're not going to waste it being frustrated from day to day and being plagued with worry and plagued with fear and plagued with anxiety every day of your life, you've been blessed with so much but you cannot see it, you cannot appreciate it because you're so blinded and you're so greedy and you will not appreciate what God has done. You will never enjoy your life until you start cultivating the... Join Baptist A.A. Allison Jim for Grace Division 2015, July 22nd through 26th at Grace International Church for five days of heaven on earth. The guest ministers, Dr. Jackie McCullough. There's something about seeing him. And Greg Patrick. <laughs> you will get stronger. Also ministering Psalmist Rocky Adoskin. And Stacey Egbo. See you there. Thanks for listening to our broadcast today. I trust you are truly blessed by the word. Today's message is available in its entirety by visiting us on our website. If you want to receive Jesus into your life, why don't you pray this simple prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Savior. I give my life to you. If you pray that simple prayer, we believe that you have been born again. Please call us, let us know. If you have any prayer requests or any help, please call into our office or send us an email. We're here to help you in your journey with God. If you're ever in or around the Houston, Texas area, you need to join us for one of our services. Our services are just simply out of this world. We'll be expecting to see you. Our praise and worship is impeccable. The messages are practical and life-changing. And the community of faith here is just wonderful. We would love to have you. But if you can't join us because of geography or location, you can always tune in on live stream by going on our website and seeing our times. God bless you. We'll be back here with some more word next week at this station at this time. God bless you.